All right, here we go. Uh, topic number 4.2. This is exploration, and we're really going to look in this video at causes and effects. Um, and again, we're staying in the period 1450 to 1750. This is unit four. All right. Um, one of the earliest reasons for this, and this is, has to do with Columbus again, um, was reasons for uh, all of a sudden the Spanish being interested in um, doing this. And this was had to do with what was called the Reconquista. We talked a little bit about this in some of the previous units. Uh, this was the effort of the Spanish to drive the Muslims from the Iberian Peninsula or from Spain. And you can see that the map shows you kind of how long it took them. But by 1492, the, Span the, the, the Muslims are gone. Um, there, are no long there are Muslims in Spain, but they are no longer in any form of power. Um, and now the Spanish kings and uh, king and queen Ferdinand and Isabella, who I'm sure you have heard of, um, are interested in doing more. Um, and they're interested in developing Spanish power um, now that they have defeated their enemy. All right. So motivations again going back to what we talked about in the last video the idea of gaining wealth obviously conquering territory spreading christianity god king and wealth uh, and gold was what they often said okay um, a lot of this is driven by the uh, what was known as mercantilism um, and the idea of mercantilism it's an economic system kind of the pre predecessor to what the capitalist system we have today uh, government the idea was that governments served their country best by encouraging exports and accumulating wealth. Um, and wealth was in the form of gold and silver. Um, colonies provided closed markets for goods, places to export to. Also, source of raw materials to build the goods. Um, and in many cases, especially the Spanish colonies, as we're going to come to see, great supplies of gold, but especially silver. Okay, Portuguese, um, some, getting back into them a little bit of some of the drivers um, and who, what, where, when kind of thing. Uh, we're going to look first at Africa and India, and on the next slide we'll look at China and uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, so early on, it's Prince Henry the Navigator. Um, as I said before, he never actually sailed. He was more the patron of the effort. He was the driver, uh, the son of the king. Um, and his efforts led to the exploration of the west coast of Africa. Um, and that whole kind of bulgy part of Africa that sticks out into the Atlantic. Um, later comes Bartolomeo de Diaz, um, and he is the first man to sail around the tip of Africa, um, and he does it in 1488. I have a misprint there, I apologize. Um, and he establishes a colony and trading post at the Cape of Good Hope. This is one of the, the continuation of the Portuguese trading post empire. Um, and he paves the way 10 years later for a man named Vasco da Gama, who is the first to sail around Africa and make it all the way to India. Uh, this connects the Atlantic and Indian oceans um, and develops the trade that goes through there. Um, and the Portuguese had to learn a lot to do that um, as far as the monsoons and a lot of other things. Their motivations were varied, um, and but it establishes the Portuguese foothold in Asia. They are the first to get to Asia uh, by an all-water route. They will be followed by many others. Okay, so once they're in Asia, um, here's kind of what they do. Um, Indonesia, the West, the East Indies, as were they're known, they capture they in 1511, I believe it is, they capture the Straits of Malacca, um, which allows them to take control of the spice trade. They also colonize some of the uh, the islands that specifically specialize in the spice trade. Uh, they have kind of a rocky relationship with China. Initially, it's harmonious uh, trade base, but as the Portuguese become more entrenched and get more ships out there, they begin engaging in what uh, most people refer to as piracy, um, the raiding of Chinese trade in that part of the world. Eventually, the Chinese ban Portuguese from touching any of their, coming into their waters and coming into any of their ports. Over time, there's some battles fought, some kind of mini wars fought, um, and eventually a truce is arranged, and the Portuguese are given the island of Macau as a trading post. Macau, um, until just recently, uh, was a Portuguese colony. They, they gave it back in the last 20 years. Um, it is probably the 
most famous for, uh, it is kind of really the gambling capital of the world. It makes Las Vegas, as far as gambling goes, look very minor. Um, and then on top of this, the Portuguese bought, brought the Jesuits with this, with them, um, these, the priests, um, and they they sought to spread Christianity. And this will often cause a lot of friction, especially when Japan, we get to Japan, uh, because the Japanese do not like, um, this infringement on their culture. Okay, the Portuguese set up what was known as a trading post empire. This is a form of imperial conquest based on the control of trade through military power rather than the control of territory and people. Uh, the Portuguese really are only interested in trade. They really weren't into conquest, at least for the long term. Um, and this was because of really what comes next here. Um, First of all, it was difficult for them to trade, so they had to become more through military force uh, because they didn't have the goods that the Indians and the, uh, the other Southeast Asians and the Chinese really wanted. Their goods were inferior, but they didn't have the power or the numbers to take and hold the territory. So they had to do a lot of it through force at the ports, um, and f kind of forcing their way in. They did have competitors, the Ottomans, the Mughals in India, the Japanese, and later the other Europeans. Um, and then you have Magellan, who is Portuguese, but he's working for the Spanish, so he becomes a competitor, and he is really the first to sail around the world. He actually doesn't make it. He's killed halfway around in the Philippines, but it's his mission, and his crew finishes the voyage, uh, becoming the first. The Spanish are the first to sail around the world, even though they did it with a predominantly Portuguese crew. Okay, that brings us to Spain. Um, speaking of the Philippines, where Magellan is... Uh, uh, killed, the Portuguese develop a base in um, the Philippines, which are off the off of the coast of China, um, and uh, but north of Indonesia. You can see the tail, top of I believe this is Borneo here, or maybe it's Salibis, um, one of the Indonesian islands to the top. So the Port uh, Philippines is kind of ideally ideally situated in between China and the Spice Islands, uh, and they're allowed to establish a colony there and become a go-between in this trade. Um, some of the reasons it worked in the Philippines was there was an extensive religious conversion in the Philippines, and eventually the Philippines, and especially the capital city here of Manila, um, will become a major transit point in the silver trade um, that we spent some time on with the DBQs um, earlier in the year and that we will come back to. Okay, um, what kind of rekindled their interest in all of this? Um, again, the desire for wealth, um, again, the, trying to get into the trade, the spread of Christianity, escape religion, and, and then on the individual side, many people trying to escape the religious persecution that was going on in Europe. Um, and this led to, this was more the drive to, for people to leave Europe and go settle somewhere else um, and develop colonies. Okay. Um, silver, as I promised. Um, we spent some time on this, should be familiar. Um, with the discovery of what was known as the the, uh, the Potosi, I guess for better uh, thing, this is giant silver mine. It had been an Incan mine. The Spanish discover it. Um, it's really an entire mountain of silver. Um, it's the largest silver mine the world has ever known. Um, it creates a whole new situation in the silver trade and um, as far as making it a world's uh, currency. Um, it this this huge influx of new product vastly increases the world's supply. At the same time, China uh, is spiking demand for silver as a uh, way to get trade because as the trade goes in, the Chinese don't really want anybody else's goods. They want the cash. So silver becomes that cash. The value of this skyrockets. It creates inflation uh, because everything becomes more expensive and silver really becomes the main form of exchange, not only with China, but fairly everywhere on the planet. All right. 
Um, some of the other players here, and these will come in later. Um, first I have is France. Um, the French mostly stayed to North America. They did stray into the Indian Ocean, but they were kind of a minor player. The only place they were a major player at all, really, in my mind, is North America. Um, you can see the blue on the map is all the Spanish territory that they controlled prior to 1750. Um, so it's prominently Canada um, and what we would call the Louisiana Purchase pardon me, um, the Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys and the Great Lakes. Um, a lot of explorers, some of these names may be familiar um, to you, depending on what you're into. La Salle, Cartier, Champlain, the man the lake is named after, Joliet, um, and Marquette. Um, those of you who are basketball fans might be familiar with Marquette University. Um, the difference between the port of the French uh, is really that they're heavily involved in the fur trade um, and not so much the spice trade and all the other stuff. They get heavily involved in furs because that's what's mostly available. Um, and we've talked already a little bit in during the course review about the Little Ice Age. Um, it's a cold period, so the furs are in great demand because they are warm. Um, and they compete heavily with the Russians in this fur trade. They established trading posts, most famously in the Americas of New Orleans and Quebec. Um, England begins to get involved, and this really begins after the Spanish Armada, uh, which was a Spanish fleet sent by the King of Spain to overthrow Queen Elizabeth and make England Catholic again. Um, ends in a disaster as some of it is British naval tactics, but most of it is bad weather um, that destroys the fleet and it is unsuccessful and Spain never really challenges England again. Um, and this leads England to becoming a naval power um, because it changes the philosophy of how to protect themselves. They want to become a naval power um, instead of a continental power. Most of their uh, early on is uh, exploration wise, at least, is North America with the colonies of America and later Canada that they take from the French. Um, and they do a lot of ex exploration in the Pacific, especially towards the end of the period. Um, a man named Captain Cook is responsible for charting a lot of the territory and, and really uh, finding, at least for the Europeans, a lot of the islands, including the Hawaiian Islands. Um, and then there's Francis Drake, who is the first, uh, the second man, I believe, to sail around the globe. Um, and he does that um, slightly after Magellan. Um, I think he's more towards the end of the 15th, of the 16th century. Um, and then they establish the famous colonies of Jamestown and Plymouth. Later, they will establish colonies uh, in um, Australia and New Zealand um, that will become settler colonies. Um, and then they will go on to take uh, other people's colonies from them. All right. And then finally, we get to the Dutch, who also explored North America and the Pacific. And a lot of the Dutch's influence, and, it's, and they were combined this up with the English and the British, they were all looking for what was called the Northwest Passage. They were trying to find a northern route um, to the Pacific Ocean as opposed to the southern route, which everybody knew was a nasty trip around the southern tip of Africa. The problem with going north was that uh, this is, especially at the time, was ice. Um, so it got very difficult to get through there. Some of the most famous of those, probably the most famous Dutch explorer was Henry Hudson, who did some of his exploring for the Dutch and some for the English. Um, a man named Barents, who eventually the Bering Sea, which is up here um, north of Alaska, and this passage between Siberia and Alaska is called the Bering Strait. Um, and a man named Tasman, who did the island of Tasmania, which is off the southern tip of uh, Australia down here. Um, did some exploring in the Pacific also. They were very heavily involved in the spice trade, as you can see from the map. All the orange was Dutch territory. Um, and you see that they also, for a brief time, had a little colony called New Amsterdam uh, that will eventually be taken over by the English and renamed New York. All right, next up will be the Columbian Exchange. <music>